Hi everybody, I'm Patrick Hansson and I'm gonna talk about disruption, I think. It's uh, a talk that I've done, I change the name of it every time, so. Uh, who am I? The guy to the right there, born as an angel, die as devil. Uh, I've been um, interested in games since I was six years old. I saw Space Invaders, and then you can count my age now. I used to have my age there, but I'm on that side of death right now, so I removed it. Um, when I saw Space Invaders, I knew exactly what I want to do the rest of my life. So I got a hold of Commodore 64 early on, back when a dinosaur walked the earth, and the said 80 processors like the Sinclairs and stuff like that. Here are some of the companies. This is actually not a company. It was uh, supposed to be a company, but uh, we get rejected by uh, the name. So uh, it become like it was a demo group. But the rest is companies. And it's only one of these that uh, I that's not still active. So I run five companies right now. Disruption. I show this, everybody. You've probably seen one of them, at least, probably all of them before, right? Um, and I think I don't need to go into that much what the company that, uh, that does disruptive um, methods is. Uh, we have uh, two game companies here. Uber, you, you have to always include that. That's the sign of disruption right now. What did they do, for example? Yeah, they crushed. They crushed the taxi industry, pretty much. And the same with, uh, we have Spotify back there. They changed totally the music industry. It's not only them, but I, I take them as a symbol. They're Swedish, so. Mojang, disrupting the game industry. Uh, yeah, they actually did. Uh, just a year before, if they will go, they had to go pretty much through publisher. And with a game like that, do you think any publisher would have released that game? No? That will never come to market if they didn't do it uh, like they did themselves. Market, market and publish it themselves. Synga, Facebook. When Facebook came, pretty much everything changed. Me, myself, I'm not using phones anymore. You want to reach me? Yeah, use the messenger. And Synga used that, pretty much. Start free to play, and it's a little bit connected to what I'm gonna uh, talk about. I'm gonna take some uh, examples of stuff that we had done. We started 1999 as a company. It's some years ago. And in my visions, and the problem is this is one hour talk, so I probably have to talk very fast. I only have 30 minutes. But to go through this. Uh, back in then, I had a vision. I wanted to hit China. China was pretty young, but I saw that they have uh, like the internet cafes coming up. And uh, the problem we had was uh, that uh, in, in China and Asia, pretty much, except Japan, we had uh, uh, problems with uh, uh, piracy. So how can we protect the game from piracy? We have to have the logic on the server side, like an MMOG, Massive Multiplayer Online Game. Everybody knows what that is, right? So uh, back then we had uh, pretty much three competitors, Asheron's Call, Ultima Online, and EverQuest. All these three was the same. Subscription-based, 3D, Except Ultima Online, though. So, and we have to have it. It had to uh, work on old computers, and all these was sold in the box in the store. That was the way uh, they primarily sold games back then. There was no digital distribution. There were no free to play. So, we actually added free to play and digital distribution back in 1999. And 
we didn't know much about Asia. We just got a feeling that if I can do quite the opposite that everybody else do, everybody else was uh, taking their industry and doing the manufacturing in China and selling to West. We were manufacturing in West and trying to sell to the Chinese. A couple of dimes, some cents was okay for us because they had so many people. And we actually managed to sign a deal with the Chinese government directly ourselves. And back then there were no game publisher. So we signed with a, a book publishing company. That was how you <laughs> signed back then. 100 pages and you need to stamp them with a red stamp, not sign back then. Um, we tried to find a Western publisher. We wanted to go. Uh, and this is a little bit about the story, mistakes that you can go uh, do. And we wanted to go with a publisher because we are developers, we're very good developers, and we totally suck at marketing and publishing everything that we are not when we are developers. So we want to work with good uh, people like that. So we were aiming for both West, especially the East. The Chinese didn't work. Six months, and we were actually thinking they were trying to reverse engineer everything we were doing because nothing happened. And never talk to the big boss in China. They pretty much made everything <laughs> fuck up for, for us, part of the French there. Um, so we continue with this. It was uh, a pretty much casual or to mid-core card game. And a little story about this. I, I'm, I'm at the person from Greed I was drinking with. And we had our first uh, business meeting. So I run my video of things we had done. And he was still a little bit drunk when he was shaking my hand. He was <laughs> laughing like crazy. I think, oh, this is going to be an awful business meeting. So uh, he started laughing when I showed this. It's like, oh, now he hates the graphics and hates everything. They look at us and say that, oh, fuck, guys. Pardon French again. So, uh, you're crazy. You were doing Hearthstone back in 1999. Yeah, it was exactly the same type of mechanics as Hearthstone back then. So we tried to run the game ourselves, the final years, but we actually have to shut down the company. We stayed too long on this. And we get, we were so early with free to play, 1999, and digital distribution. And we had no social marketing network, so we tried to build that. You cannot build Facebook yourself. You have to have it first. So when we tried to take it over ourselves, our bank uh, said they want six months and they want a prototype they can work with. And I asked them after six months, okay, can we get uh, permission just to take money, credit cards, payments, microtransactions from internet? No, we have a, a policy here at the bank. We cannot install other programs. I'm like, what? So we were dead, pretty much. Had to shut it down. Oh, I went too far there. Should I be on that? W was I talking to the wrong picture? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, read that. No, that's one. So, conclusion, uh, not understanding the business in China. Back in 1999, we didn't understand it. And I, I'm talking to people, and I said, we still don't, doesn't understand it. We need to, you need to work with somebody in China, like an extra person connecting you to the Chinese company or something. And we were too early with free-to-play. There was something in our head. Yeah, we think free-to-play will work. But do you know what the publisher said that we were talking to about? How do you monetize something that's free? They didn't understand it. They couldn't accept that games could be free at all. And uh, we, we set up. We actually built Steam uh, three years ahead of Steam just to be able to ship the, uh, the game. So we downloaded it and uh, updated, we have communication system built in. It was down in the system tray. That's the whole key about Steam, why it's so 
popular. It's a Trojan horse that's always there in your, on your computer. That's why they succeeded very good with that. So every, we built everything that the future should hold, but we were too early with it. And that's the problem with Disruptor. If you're too early, you have to have the money or strike it yourself. Because it's coming, but somebody else is going to reap the harvest from it. And uh, this was, we were not strong enough, mentally, ourselves. We didn't have the faith. So uh, some of the young guys, they're like, they collapsed. They just went crashing into the wall. I still, I br brought them back. So we've been working together now 17 years. But they, some of this was 18 years back then. And I was not that. And uh, most important, we gained experience. Think about it. Back in 1999, building all this yourself from scratch. Okay, it was not a 3D engine. It was a 2D engine. It was, that was not the most important. But building all the system, digital distribution system, building a free-to-play system, actually starting to think how you monetize. And a card game is really cool to monetize, right? You can give a starter deck for free. And they sell like 10 cards for pretty much nothing. It's digital. You don't have to charge 4 euro for 25 cards. You can charge, uh, charge $1 for 10 cards. And it's pretty good incomes. So uh, what happened after that? We were thinking, OK, if we, am I on the right? Yeah, I'm all right. Um, if we cannot get a, a publisher, and investors, back then it wasn't any investor interested in games at all, but it was publisher that was sitting with the money. If we cannot make them understand free to play and digital distribution that we believed was the future, we have to play their game. So we make something visually uh, impressive, but we didn't use, build all the technology ourselves. So we have Mech on a Swedish company bought up uh, by Aegis, that bought up by NVIDIA later on, that had great game physics. And we talked with an American guy. This was a one-man show, one year ahead of Doom 3. He built his own per-pixel engine. And I was always been, I'm a horror fan myself, and I've been interested in zombies, so I want to be, back then we had Resident Evil. There was everything was zombies, but I want to make it like natural, like Walking Dead is now. We're actually the first game back then that had fast zombies too. What you see here is like a case zero. It's a hospital. Everybody loved the story. It was about four different angles, four different people you were playing. But it said like zombies, we don't believe it's zombies. Oh shit. <laughs> so this, when he's waking up, he comes rushing towards you. And why you want a per pixel shader engine? Yeah. You can work with light like this. You couldn't do that before. So you can sneak around with torchlight and somebody like just jump you in your face. Try to survive. Why did we do uh, game physics? This nurse, she doesn't have any weapons at the start. Yeah, yeah, she grabs a fire axe afterwards. <laughs> but she used physics like tables, chairs, pin zombies so she can grab something and kill them. Uh, this is what the publisher said. The story was like Pulp Fiction, if you've seen that movie, from different angles, combined. And they said, wow. I think there still ain't much games that done that type of story. And we were trying to make it not like a fantasy-based, but what could happen in real life, and who was the bad guys. Do you start us as the military? And you understand that military was not the good guys at all. But you have all the automatic weapons. You, it was easy to play for you. Too much blood. Yeah. We actually had a German. I think it was Koch Media. Something like that, yeah. Or part of that. And they said, oh, we love this game. This could be, but it's too much blood for German. Can you make it green or yellow? No, no, no. 
So a conclusion about that, when we try actually to go to the publisher, work with the publisher, do something ha ha really cool and really, really new technology-wise. And we didn't build the technology ourselves this time. We worked with people like the one-man show I told you about in a Swedish company. Problem is, building stuff like that, and you don't get a publisher, that was too big for us. We couldn't continue. If we get, like, no on that one, then we're dead. And uh, we didn't have a track record. What could we show? If we could show that we uh, made a free-to-play that they still didn't understand game. Untested technology cost money and time. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, and the problem is nobody had done zombies like this. That would be a disruption too. Not a big uh, uh, disruption. Resident Evil existed still. But as a subgenre of the zombie games, here it comes. It's pretty much like a TV series when you play it. People would probably like it, but it didn't work at all. That the end is. <laughs> okay. Wrong button. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're French again. Fuck the game industry. If they don't understand this, then I don't want to work with this boring business. Uh, so, we actually had the first uh, company I had to shut down. We were actually tried very long, from uh, 1999 to 2005, 2006. And then in uh, 2006, we sh had to shut that company down. So the, we don't care about the game industry. They're idiots. So we take our technology, and we actually started helping like NHL, Budweiser, when they needed something cool that nobody else could do, or they needed something of the highest quality, they had some technology as experts from Sweden. I'm from Sweden, I forgot to say that. So that they could use, and they paid a lot of money per hour. So we went over to the web and app business and started a, a subsidiary called New Regions. Very humble. We are the New Regions. We rule the world. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, the problem was that EA heard about us. So they like, uh, weren't you the guys that were doing free to play? Uh, yeah. Oh, can you come help us with stuff? Yeah. Uh, fuck the game. Yeah. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> so cash in again from that. Cash in from EA too. So uh, what we helped them with, I'm gonna show you a little bit afterward. So we start up Conquer Games. So that's the follow-up from uh, Disciples on the Machine. Uh, and Conquer Games now, we're back in games. How is the time? 11 minutes. 11 minutes. I'm spinning up here. Uh, just, before, uh, just before we, uh, at the end of finish, um, uh, the, the Disciples of the Machine, uh, we shut down that company. I was thinking, okay, we're doing two big things. Let's make something e easy. And this is the hardest game I ever designed in my, it took me a whole hour to design the whole game. That's never happened before. And I was actually, we're trying to do a simple puzzle game that we can do ourselves, all the way from start to finish. Because I believe that uh, casual or mobile will actually work. <laughs> and remember, this is 2006, 2007. What happened 2008? iTunes store opened. So remember that when I'm talking about this. <laughs> so we, we were t uh, mobile back then, Nintendo DS. So uh, we actually managed to find a publisher that liked it, also a German uh, publisher, and uh, they're still alive. Uh, and the, we started the production, but EA got us, we were seven people out of eight 
working at EA, bringing in a lot of money. So we have to subcontract that for somebody that can help us and transfer our prototype over to Nintendo DS. We paid for that and had everything uh, 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 ready. But the publisher backs away. They said, we have the statistics right now and the statistics for casual games on mobile platforms like Nintendo DS sucks. Nobody want to play casual games on mobile. Oh my god. What should you do? They screwed us. They, they did it. They were actually, we, we bought all the dev, dev kits and everything, developed everything, and they hadn't signed. So don't trust the words. You need to have that contract written. So last day when we should sign, they pull it back. So we had to take from our own pocket to pay the subcontract. We couldn't behave like the assholes they were doing that to us. Because you never know how long you survive anyway, so be good to people. And iTunes Store opens 2008. So, well, yet again, we were in the right. But that really hit us with three games in a row. And we're thinking, now we are exactly right in time. But we were looking at the wrong. The infrastructure, the sales channels hadn't opened yet. They were doing that 2008. And the cool thing is, the last hair. Um, the game, actually, that took one hour, is inspired by, by the game that got me started, Space Invaders. I made a puzzle game of Space Invaders. Sounds crazy. And Arkanoid combined. Uh, that's the base mechanics. And everybody that played it, everybody, just falls in trance. I cannot speak with them. They just sit play. And that's a good sign. So, at GDC 2009, after uh, 2007, 2008, 2009, free-to-play actually become like uh, uh, a standard in the game industry. So, I, I was, we're taking our last money going to GDC, thinking we can meet four people or something like that, uh, signing up at the Game Connection. You have a meeting slot of 42, uh, uh, two or three days, what it is. We got 75 of the biggest companies that want to meet us. People that laughed at us before and said, oh, we should have listened to you. We will be bigger than Singa if we listen to you. But uh, what is next on, on, on the mobile market? And I said, hardcore, shooters, esports, back in 2009. They're like, oh, we don't believe in you. So, so we made just a marketing game because we wanted to do a survival and crafting open world uh, zombie game. So we did a market game just to show this. We were insecure again. So with a marketing game, we probably get some feedback. And we're talking to Tapjoy. Have you heard about that company? They say, you can get 5,000 downloads. You're not going to get more. We got 1.7 million, no marketing, no press release, no nothing. So it worked. And you pretty much see that now. The time has changed. It's not Angry Birds or, or, or Candy Crush and stuff like that. The casual market's pretty much dying now. So we spend more time trying to extend th this marketing game. And the problem is they said comes out. And what we were designing was exactly like the, they said. And we're like, can we at least try to be first on mobile? So what you see on the right side, we actually made, and we have that running. In 2013, we made, uh, actually, they said, on mobile, with 50 players playing at the same time, surviving uh, in a 2,000 square meters area. So uh, never listen. It's uh, like some words, yeah, you're just skipping it. Uh, and the problem was so far away from 1999 to this. We have to relearn. We have to check all this ad system, all this about free to play ourselves, even though we were one of the starters of it. Uh, but we gave the uh, game, marketing game, away for free. 
And that's a little bit different, because when we're looking at the mobile games that was out at that time, they're charging money for crap. And we were thinking, this is too little. We cannot charge anything. We just give it away as a marketing game only. We'd probably be <laughs> making a lot of money, so psh, stupid to me. And we had no reviews, no marketing, no nothing. And we got 1.7 million downloads. And still, remember the story before zombies? No, zombies are not dead, even though they are. And this is the puzzle game back again. And we got a, a big Finnish company that got like crazy when they saw this. So we have to change that because they worked with, they needed character and they needed story, everything was character story based. So we just changed the graphics, the mechanics was the same, but we stuck with them and listened to everything. Oh, can you change this? Can you change this? Can you sh two years later, we missed the whole train. And the problem is uh, that uh, I got some really big investor that wanted to uh, get this, but I wanted that company to work with us because they had a lot, like a billion users. If I got it out and they're interested, it was pretty much okay. But then the market changed again during these two years. So casual was not that big anymore. So we pretty much lost that. We're gonna do it on Switch, I think, though. <laughs> back again from Nintendo DS to that one. So right now, we're not going to get all this money that we could have get from the mobile part of that game. And don't expect publishers to be straightforward. If they say that, uh, oh, this is wonderful, and try to oh, change this, change this, you have to stop somewhere and say that, show us the fuck Give money. Oh, French again. I'm sorry. Uh, show us the money. And this, I go very quickly. I think my time is running very short now. Uh, we wanted to do uh, a tablet game, uh, taking uh, the casual and mid-core players into a space strategy game. We signed up with a publisher that we thought two old guys were really cool. Like, these are good guys, we were thinking. The problem is, they know about the strategy that we want to do it on tablets, uh, very short, uh, little cost, 4 95 back, back then. And uh, they set the price on 20 and said they had no uh, experience for mobile. So we do it on Steam first, and the market it wrong and called it the 4X space strategy game. I said, and I saw that the day before the launch, and I said, don't do that. This is a casual, mid-core game. You're going to angry everybody that loves these type of games. And people get crazy. This is more Master of Orion type of people. And some sub-genres, you cannot make uh, your own version. Like championship football manager games, for example. Don't go into that area. The users, if it's not a different platform, if you do on PC, for example, Championship Manager, or you do something that's close to Master of Orion, the fans will kill you. Civilization, for example. These type of, if you make copies of that on the uh, platform that they exist, PC, for example, it will kill you if you're not correct in everything, if you change something. I'll skip a little bit here. And what we're doing right now, are we back to 1999? <laughs> so what we're doing right now is Destiny or the Division, like a um, uh, softer for version of MMOGs with um, uh, real-time uh, multiplayer support uh, on mobile. That's a screenshot from that. I have it in my pocket. It's downloading the, the next version if somebody wants to try it out. And this is what we're believing. And we actually, if we manage with this, we totally disrupt, we totally destroy the mobile game market. And uh, 1999, uh, who, what country were doing free to play back then? Nobody knew about. Korea. So look at what Korea is playing right now. This is the next step. They're doing Diablo clones there. What's coming after Diablo? Skyrim clone type of, this is exactly that. Real time, first person, 
role-playing game. So this is the biggest project, and we haven't learned anything yet. So why are we doing a big project again? For the fun of it. We always I skip to this. Total losers. Now, since 1999, we actually understood how to survive on not having the big titles. We can always, if you're good at this, and people know that, you can always survive. So you just time the perfect moment when the investors or the publishers understand the market. Our biggest problem with a new product, uh, they're saying, oh, we love it, but nobody's done it before, so we need to not take any risk. So if you look at the right side, that's how we get the money in. It's a little bit of the things we've been helping with the Frostbite engine, uh, EA's biggest engine, a default engine, King, giving away for free, 2D engine, and a couple of games. Everything from Battlefield by Company 2 that used the Frostbite uh, engine, we helped them with. So that's, we pull in money and we do crazy stuff still. And listen to that. If, if you survive, just keep it going. If you survive, it's not the first title. The more titles you make, the more chances are. The, the ones you're meeting, the ones you hear about, is the ones that struck gold the first time. If you lear learn to survive, then you can learn how to uh, evolve and become better at what you're doing. And then you get a bigger chance to see them. Okay, I'm over time. Thank you very much. That's the logo, Concord Games. Thank you, Patrick. And that is something new. <laughs> something new. <laughs> Thank you. So if anyone has questions, um, maybe talk to them later because we're running a little bit over. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Lots of experience, lot to tell. <laughs> uh, that's for you.